Okay, I will get started. So hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Al Yang, CEO, co-founder of SafeBase. At SafeBase, we help B2B companies, B2B technology enable companies close enterprise deals faster by helping companies share their security program and automate access to sensitive compliance information with a smart trust center. And today I have with me today well, two well-known security professionals and thought leaders who happen to be early SafeBase users. We're super excited about this. We're also really excited to share, uh, to hear Kristen and Kathy share their best practices uh, for building a smart trust center. Feel free to use the Q&A section on the, on the right to ask any questions throughout the webinar. I'll be keeping an eye out uh, so that we can help answer any questions integrated into the webinar itself. So first, I would like to do some introductions. First, I have Kathy Wang, CISO at Very Good Security. Uh, Kathy is well recognized as a thought leader in the information security world. She has a strong background in research and security leadership. Uh, she's worked in government, commercial, technology startup environments, and currently advise many security startups, uh, as well as just companies in general. I, I met Kathy early on in our, in our journey and is super excited that she has given us so much guidance along the way. Uh, she's also an internationally recognized malware expert, done a lot of research, evaluated and operationalized various solutions uh, for detecting and preventing client-side attacks. And um, she also is a co-author of a book, Beautiful Security, Please Go, Go, Go buy it, go go read it. Um, and she holds a BS and MS in electrical engineering from University of Michigan. The other feature guests we have today here, and I don't know where that clicking is coming from. I don't think it's the chat, right? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, the other feature guest I have today is Kristen Duell. And Kristen uh, is a director of cybersecurity risk at Mindbody. Kristen is the uh, has been leading cybersecurity risk management for a global mid-market SaaS marketplace with a diverse product vertical since 2018. And she also provides management leadership to the cyber risk team. Uh, she's accountable for continuous improvement and maturity of programs. Prior to leading cybersecurity risk at MindBody, she was a principal consultant at KAD Consulting, where she served clients, including Nike, Smarsh, and she has over 25 years of technology experience with a master's degree uh, in disaster science. So thank you both for being here. Wow, what a pleasure. Uh, I love to kick it off just to learn more about the role, how the, the role of security and how that plays at each of your company. Please tell me a bit about your company and the role of, how, of security. Sure, I I can start. Well, thank you, first of all, Al, for having us here. It's a pleasure, and it's great to meet you, Kristen, as well. Um, so I'm CISO at Very Good Security, and Very Good Security is about protecting sensitive customer data. So customer data is tokenized and vaulted, stored. Um, this helps them to better meet their compliance requirements. Um, and we have a lot of customers that are in the payment industry and um, also other enterprise customers. So security is a value for us that is security first, right? That's the most important thing to us because we store sensitive data. Um, so that said, a security team is very much focused on reducing the overall risk footprint and also figuring out how to reduce the effects of a potential blast radius if there is an incident, right? So that's what my team focuses on. And, and Kristen? Uh, first of all, thanks, Al, for having me. It's a pleasure to meet you as well, Kathleen, and uh, welcome everybody who's joining the webinar. I'm excited to connect with everyone. Um, as Al said, I work for MindBody. I'm the director of cybersecurity risk. Um, it is a conversation stopper at dinner parties. <laughs> um, but essentially, um, MindBody is a privately held mid-market SaaS organization. We're global. Um, we develop software. We're a marketplace for all of our wellness customers. Um, so as such, we, um, we store, collect, and transmit 
personal information, personal health information, and cardholder data. Um, so we are highly regulated, even though we are a private company. Um, we're PCI certified and high trust certified. Uh, we also have our SOC certification. So um, you can imagine as one of MindBody's customers, you will be interested to know that how secure we keep your data. So what, what is our security posture? What are we doing with your information? Um, so as a marketplace, security is the foundation of everything we do. Um, we use security uh, policies and standards to drive how we develop our software, how we store your data, how we transmit it, and um, ultimately what we end up doing with that customer data. Perfect. Thank you, too. So with that in, as context, clearly security is top of mind. Build trust with customers, maintain trust with build trust with prospective customers and the community and maintaining trust as you continue to serve those customers. It's not just a brand, but it's an intentional action and you all have a team that's doing that. And security is also two sides, well, it's many sides, but what you've kind of spoke about is as the, call it the vendor who's providing value, right? But clearly you also are buyers for other tools. So that's a really good context you've said. So with more and more SaaS companies than ever before, we're seeing People have people been talking about going to the cloud uh, and that's really happening. Third party assessments can be time consuming and can be challenging. We're clear. We're always hearing from you and, and from the chief information security officers and other security professionals that they're just bogged down by these security questionnaires, emails, a uh, lot of work around security reviews. You know, can we just talk about maybe start with Kristen what are the biggest challenges you face when working with sales or people that are in the go to market, you know, front line when it, when it comes to what are some challenges you face dealing with this and how to enable third party risk assessment? Uh, well, you you nailed it, Al. We have a very small team and we have dozens of security questionnaires that come in from both potential and existing customers. Um, and for those existing customers, they are also under audit requirements. So we have auditors, potential and existing customers. Um, so the magnitude of questionnaires that come in and they're never standard. It's never answer these 10 questions um, or answer these 400 questions, it's all over the board. Um, so our team is not scalable um, internally. So uh, for us to be able to have a tool where we can provide a self-service solution to our customers and to those auditors is a really great start. Um, so that was the big selling point for Safe Base. The challenges, uh, it did alleviate a lot of our, our challenges where we're, we weren't scalable, we were seeing a lot of questionnaires. Um, but within the sales process itself, our team was a bottleneck because we were required to get all the NDAs signed, review the questionnaires, loop in all of the other teams um, that were to provide data for those questionnaires. And it would be, a two, three week backlog. Yeah. Yeah. We, we constantly hear about sales teams growing, but then the security team <laughs> stays yeah. the same. So, <laughs> um, and to you, Kathy, uh, what are some of the challenges you face when working with sales to enable this third party risk assessment part of building trust? Yeah. I mean, Kristen said it very well. Um, one of the challenges is scaling the team. There's never going to be as many security engineers or compliance people as there are uh, sales folks. So that's okay. It just means that we have to figure out how to automate and how to scale the team. And SafeBase is really great for automating a lot of these processes to really drastically reduce the sales cycle, right? So when you get a security questionnaire, as Kristen said, it's never standard. We try. I mean, we really would like everyone to take a, a CSA or a SIG or, or, you know, cake or something like that. But the reality is that that only works some of the time. That doesn't work all the time. Right. So then the rest of the time, uh, we have to figure out how to speed up the process. And it's not only that. It's in our case in specific um, because we store sensitive data. 
there's always a security risk assessment that's done by our prospective customers on our platform. So part of that is looking at all of our reports, whether they're pen test reports or web app assessment reports, they would like to know how long it takes us to remediate findings from those types of reports. That makes total sense. That's what I would do as well, right? When I do due diligence. Um, if it takes you a really long time and you, you go beyond uh, SLAs that are expected by industry to mitigate a SEV1, I'm going to look at you a lot harder, right? Because now I'm really worried. What are you doing with my data? How are you protecting it? Um, so we want to give customers this level of trust and assurance and transparency at the same time. And SafeBase has really helped us automate and provide that information to build trust with customers. Um, I can tell you that our sales team really likes the tool because mm -hmm. instead of all this back and forth emails that they have to now kind of middleman, right, with the prospective customers and the security team introducing us and saying, hey, they'll provide you the document. This is a much shorter process, which is a win-win situation for everyone. Right. We get our reports out faster and customers get the data that they're looking for faster. Mm. No, that's really helpful, helpful to know. And our mission here at SafeBase is that if a company has put in the work, the resources, the energy, frankly, hire a team of security professionals whose, whose job, right, whose key responsibility is protect the company, build a system to help uh, protect not just the company, but customer data, they should be rewarded with the efforts that they put in and not be slowed down by security by any means. And that's actually not what we're seeing today. So hopefully you're getting that value. And without, you know, just saying about it, you know, I'll, I'll share my screen and hopefully we can start with Kristen here, walk through your security trust center. And uh, we're always here also, you know, part of the philosophy here at SafeBase is always improving. And so feel free to, throw out any feedback you have uh, where this is not all just praising. We're here to take uh -huh. feedback. We're here to make improvements. You can call us out. So what you're seeing here is MindBody's Security Trust Center. This is MindBody's homepage. And when Kristen said they're a uh, private mid-sized company, they are gigantic. I think you recently bought uh -huh. a company for a lot of money. Um, so security is super important and it's part of their DNA. So if you go to the security tab on their homepage, you'll, you'll be linked to their public trust center. And they're one of the most frequently visited trust platform we have across our platform, hundreds of companies that are using SafeBase. So here's the, here's your trust center. Tell us about, you know, what went in and we worked with you throughout this and thank you for the feedback along the way. You know, let's just go from the top and you can talk a lot on that kind of navigate. What are some of the things that you're proud of? What are some of the things that you like your customers to see what's important to you? Yeah, sure. Um, thanks, Al. Happy to walk through. Um, so I'll start by saying like the 50,000 foot view of getting started with SafeBase was, um, if you can scroll down just a little bit, we have all these wonderful cards down here. Um, you can see the risk profile, the report card, the completed forms. Um, so there, there were many options for us to choose, um, but we wanted to keep this a little bit more concentric to um, to the information we, we really wanted to share publicly or, or even privately. So we went through this process of kind of scaling back the number of cards that we wanted to show on this page. And then also consolidate some of the other information into some of these cards. Um, I will be honest, one of the things that we ran into is customization. Um, so when we signed on and we start to, started to build this out, we realized if we wanted something special, well, Kathy would also get that something special, <laughs> for example. So uh, it was a little bit of a challenge to get to where what you see today, but um, SafeBase team was there. We partnered really well together um, and they, they were able to provide some shortcuts and help us um, to get some, some of the customization that we really needed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I'll talk about this one thing that we recently sent uh, Update. I'll go to my our SafeBase's own security trust center, and we'll go over to Kathy, which is this idea that you can provide trust in our updates. And most recently, we not only talked about um, how we added the trusted by uh, 
car, but we also talked about the security update, which frankly helped a lot of our customers, how they how they deal with Lockport J. I remember specifically working with Kristen and we actually decided to put it uh, in the overview card because they really wanted to call this out and in the security prospectus card where they've decided to make it public. And we're seeing a lot of traffic here uh, when, when, when people come to your portal, clicking on this page, which actually takes you to your security perspectives and your CISO, Jason actually wrote an entire letter mm -hmm. about it. And that was really cool to see and all the, all the traction that, that it received. And hopefully what that did, uh, in addition to being transparent about it, is that you and your team got a lot fewer emails about this mm -hmm. And that people were able to read and understand how you're dealing with it. I can only imagine the hundreds of thousands of customers you have who might be curious. Yeah, you know, one thing about the pay, this the um, trust center is it doesn't reduce the number of emails, but it does provide us a place, a landing place to send those customers, all of those inquiries. Instead of sending a forum email or answering each one specific, we're able to just point them here. Hey, we have all these amazing white papers that you can read. There's information about Log4j, all of the other Trust Center updates, they're right here on this page. So if there's something that you need that you don't see, please let us know. But otherwise, you know, go here, <laughs> read the information. Um, Exactly. And that, that's how we dealt with it as well. We definitely got all the emails still from our vendor, from our mm -hmm. customers. And we're able to, for on the go-to-market side, instead of saying, well, let me play quarterback and connect you with my security team or just forward the email, go here, go and see how we dealt with it. And you can have, if you have more questions, you can reach out. Yeah. Kathy, so so one, one last note before we go over to Kathy. Um, I did want to say uh, during the Log4j issue, um, there were a lot of, so our technical account managers were starting to reach out. Hey, our customers are asking, are we impacted? Are you impacted? Are they impacted? Um, so we have a global array of sales teams because we are global and we're all in different time zones. All, we're all working on different things. Um, so having it here provided the entire organization information at their fingertips. Um, so because SafeBase was new, it took, it took that log4j maybe one day for the fire to spread in my body to say, hey, everybody, all the information is here on the security page. That's awesome. That's great. I actually didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Kristen. And Kathy, talk to us about your security trust center. Security is what you guys do. So love to know how this has been helpful and how you thought about setting it up. Yeah, so this has been a, um, a gradual process for us setting up, and um, I will be totally transparent and say that I was the executive sponsor for this page, but not the main stakeholders working on this page, and that would be my GRC team, right? So my director of GRC, she had a, a very heavy hand in building this out, and I'm very proud of what they built here. This is really awesome. Um, we are, as a security product company and our customer base, the way it is, we are PCI level one compliant, and then we are also SOC two compliant, right? So we have put these reports here so that the sales team is able to help customers self-serve to request these reports. And that saved us a lot of time and really helped our small team scale as well, which is super important. Um, and to the earlier points that were made about Log4j, I don't want this to be a focus specifically on that, mm -hmm. but the reason why that's important and in having information about the latest major vulnerabilities on these pages is because in the security industry, we're very big on not over ambulance chasing, if that makes sense, right? We don't, we don't want to necessarily put out a blog post about every single major security vulnerability if it doesn't necessarily impact us directly, right? But then at the same time, understandably, the customer base would like to know who's been impacted by this major vulnerability because nowadays it's everywhere on media, right? Log4j within a very short time is on every single major media outlet page. So it is fresh in the mind of every customer 
And it's really, really important to have good external communications around events like that. Mm -hmm. So this type of trust page is a wonderful way to get that information out in a way that isn't, you know what, are we going to have to email every single customer to let them know that we have not been directly impacted by this or we have, right? And then either way, if you do that, you're going to get responses back, which means more emails. And I'm, I'm not blaming the customer base. I, I would do the same thing, but this makes it way easier to get the information out, which is very valuable to a security team. Awesome. Thank you, Kathy. One thing I want to point out too is I had the pleasure of working with the two of you early on as we're building our company and all your feedback were incorporated. It helped a lot with our roadmap. And the biggest learning for me personally is how easy it needs to be and how much power we need to give to the security and GRC team in setting up this portal uh, for themselves. So what I want to share is our own security. We docked with our own product. This is our security portal. A key value prop is to help prospective customers understand how we build our security program. And once they become paying customers or they want to become paying customers, they can always subscribe to our portal so that any updates we make around either it's the Russian Ukraine conflict and how we're dealing with it, if we're affected by it to other incidents that unfortunately will happen again to, hey, we just got our ISO or hey, we just got our type two, SOC two, anything that these stakeholders are in the know. And that's the outside. This is what people see, but in the on the inside, and I want to share this, is this every company that uses SafeBase gets an app that looks like this. And the app is really cool because it comes with dashboard. And the dashboard shows the portal visitor, and the statistics, and then the accounts. Uh, and I probably shouldn't show these things. But <laughs> the idea is that it comes with a lot of things. And it's very, very easy to set it up today and then to, to provide updates to the trust center. So um, thank you both. And I will stop sharing screen. So we and can what I want to say also, Al, is you know how much we really loved working with the safe base team. Um, the velocity that you are all able to provide for our requests and, you know, things like, you know, how do we do this? How do we make this happen? Uh, the customer support has been fantastic. Thank you, Kathy. That means a lot to me. Uh, as someone who's not coding away, <laughs> you know, I add value by listening carefully to what our customers are saying. And one thing, uh, that I didn't get to show them to, to emphasize that point is we realize it's not just the speed to which we can help um, our customers get access requests faster, automated, but the data that comes with the downloads, you know, how many viewers and documents are being downloaded and all this is on the dashboard as well. So which we're constantly taking in your, your feedback and we're excited as we're scaling, as we most recently announced a funding round, which is a testament to the mission we're providing, you know, everything we can do, we'll continue to listen. We're building out the team to, to really wrap that up. I know Kristen had many feedback early on, as she mentioned, and we're, that's all on the roadmap and we're all actively working on it. Um, I guess just a time check, one kind of a last question that I had is, what advice do you have to new users who are setting up their trust center and should they do it? You know, what tools and processes and procedures would you change, you know, to, to make a su successful launch of your trust center? Um, gosh, you know, we moved from a static web page where everyone across the organization that worked in security had a contribution and nobody actually owned that page. <laughs> we had to go to our marketing team to say, hey, we have an update. It was very complex. Um, so when we moved over to safe base, we had this kind of blank slate where we could write anything. Um, so we had, a, we had many stakeholders who were providing, we had our um, network engineers, we had our cybersecurity operations team, we had our executive staff legal, um, because my team doesn't own all of these aspects. Um, so I, I went in through, or my team went in systematically um, to get contribution copy for each of these things. Um, and then we were just kind of like 
the puppeteer that brought it all together and put it into the thing. So we weren't doing all of the writing. We weren't doing all the copy. It saved us a lot of time. And ultimately, it was more accurate. So, Kathy, anything to note? Uh, in terms yeah. Of, yep. Yeah, for sure. Um, so my advice is, you know, Rome wasn't built in one night, right? Mm -hmm. And it's okay to start small and start with small objectives. So, for example, for us, we started with uh, Stop 2 and PCI. Those were what we wanted to share. Then we got feedback from the sales team, and they said, this is really, really lightening the load for us and speeding up our cycle. Well, let's add things like our pen test reports, our, you know, web app assessment reports. Um, you know, so we started from there and built on and on, and then the log for j and other information got added. And, you know, so it is okay to build it incrementally. Um, it doesn't all need to be complete before you make it public. Excellent. I agree, I agree with that, Kathy. It was great advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the questions from the participants, um, is there any specific standard questionnaire? So let, let's, let's for example, there's VSA, there's the cake, there's the SIG, and there are others that are coming out. Clearly having one of those or all of them on your security trust center helps your sales team share this proactively. And hopefully that can reduce the number of questionnaires what we're seeing across the board. The question here is, is there one standard that you live by, you, you're kind of, you're behind it? Uh, if not, if so, can you talk about that? We'll start with Kristen. Um, yeah, so MindBody, um, we're not in education and we're not in government. We don't have a lot of those type of customers. I, we do, uh, but I wouldn't say it's a majority. Um, we have had requests for things like the cake or heck that, um, but our standard is SIG. Um, so we completed on behalf of MindBody a SIG uh, that we share um, privately on our Safe Base page. Mm. Excellent. And Kathy? Yeah. And CAKE is our standard as well. We took a look at CSA. We took a look at CAKE. We took a look at SIG, right? And as I mentioned earlier, that might help speed things up. And some puts, uh, prospective customers will take that, but not everyone will, right? So mm -hmm. I would estimate it at this point of maybe 50%. That's but right. it depends on the types of companies that your sales team is Mm -hmm. prospecting too, right? That's right. That's exactly right. And we're seeing about 50% and starting to be more uh, because it's also a lot of work you, you would know. Uh, and on the buyer side to evaluate all these questionnaires and keep track of them, right? So another question was asked, and this one I can address, which is how does SafeBase help reduce the amount of customers who want you to fill out, you know, these specific spreadsheets and create rework around the security sales thing? Well, what we do is by putting the trust center front and center to the prospective customer and asking the prospective customer to share this internally to the vendor security assessment team and to request data to download either the SIG or the VSA, whatever it may be, so that trust is built initially. I think from a, a consensus I've gotten from the security professionals who are doing these is it's not so much if you're answering yes or no, you can have no, but do I trust that you have a team who's going to make changes and at the core care about protecting customer and company data. Like it's more of a, the spirit than it is like needing to have one specific requirement. People are always willing to work with you if you care about it. And that's what's really important. So what we do is we help you build trust to make sure whoever you're talking to know, Hey, we care about this. This is why we have all these security artifacts here. Um, any reactions to that team here? Excellent. I think, yeah, very, very accurate. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I know we're up against time and uh, I wanted to uh, thank the, the awesome and so thoughtful leaders here today who provided us with insight, with personal experience, and we will continue to work hard here at SafeBase to fulfill the mission that we have and to serve our customers. So I'm excited to grow with these two uh, thought leaders and security professionals. So thank you everyone for being here today. I also wanna thank our speakers as well. Mm -hmm. Feel free to visit safebase.io, start your, start your account today. And thank you again, Chris and Kathy, so much uh, for your time. Thanks for having me, Al. Thank you. Take care, bye. bye. bye.